Welcome to another 3ABN Today program. Thank you for joining us as you do each and every day and for your love and support of 3ABN. One of the things that the Lord impressed me 31 years ago was that to build a television station, of course we know God does it, and, and with your help and all of us joining together, that will reach the world with an undiluted three angels' messages, one that would counteract the counterfeit. I have to tell you the truth, I didn't know what all of that meant at the time. And I was a carpenter by trade, didn't know anything about television, had sang on television and been around some studios a few times, and especially music, but didn't know what that was. So as a layman, I said, Lord, I'll go forward, and, but you'll have to supply every need. I'm not a preacher, I'm not a teacher, but I've been amazed over the years to see what God has done. I've been amazed to see what's happened, not only in technology, from the great big 12-foot dish that some of you probably remember, down to now watching on an iPhone or a thumb drive or a little Roku box, uh, iPads. I mean, it's amazing where technology, you can watch 3ABN all around the world. But what I'm most excited about more than the technology is the times in which we are living. And it's exciting every day to come here to 3ABN and be a part of watching Bible prophecy being fulfilled as we speak. Today, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Pastor Steve Wolberg. Thank you, Danny. Steve, it's great to have you here. Is this an exciting time to be alive or what? Oh, uh, Danny, I'm just amazed. And, uh, and you said that you're not a preacher or a teacher, and I didn't grow up a preacher or a teacher either. <clears throat> uh, I grew up in the Hollywood Hills. I, I'm Jewish. My family was very secular. As a teenager, I was lost in drugs and wild mm -hmm. living in the Hollywood lifestyle. And, mercy. and when I was 20 years old, the Lord just uh, made a move on my soul turned right. me around, uh, showed me Gethsemane and the cross, <clears throat> changed my life, and uh, eventually led me into the ministry. So I guess I am a preacher and a teacher. Uh, I'm an <laughs> well, you are a speaker minister and director of wow. White Horse Media. Now, how did you come up with a name like White Horse Media? Uh, it was a group of us praying in the Fresno area a number of years ago. We had a previous name for the ministry, and we weren't happy with it. And we prayed, Lord, give us a name that is, is a better name. <laughs> and so we, uh, one of my associates uh, was actually driving down the, uh, down the highway, and he saw a billboard on the side of the road that said, Dark Horse Properties. <laughs> and it was a real estate ad, yeah. mm -hmm. and he thought about Dark Horse, Dark Horse, and his creative mind thought about Revelation and Revelation 19, Jesus coming on a white horse. White horse. So we, yeah. we discussed the name, and then we added uh, the word media to the end of it because we're a media ministry trying to reach Absolutely. out through radio and television, uh, internet, etc. So the Absolutely. name stuck. We liked it, and it's based on Jesus coming in Revelation 19 that says he's coming on a white horse, so that's how we got the name. Mm -hmm. You have a burden for prophecy. I've known you a number of years, and from I don't know how long, many years it's been since you've been coming here, but we're always many looking years. forward to prophecy. You've done numerous series on prophecy, but today's a new day. That's right. It, it is a new day, and for 36 years since I've been a Christian, I've been studying prophecy. Mm -hmm. When I first became a Christian, I realized Jesus came once. <clears throat> he died. He rose from the dead for me. 
for everyone. And then I just was ca uh, captivated by the, the truth in the Bible that he was going to come back again. Mm -hmm. So I've been studying prophecy for 36 years. And as you said, today's a new day. We are in a time when there are prophecies, especially in Revelation chapter 13, that are being fulfilled right in front of our eyes. Mm -hmm. And our ministry, White Horse Media, we've, we've uh, addressed many different topics in the past, but we are, we are zeroed in like a laser beam Absolutely. right now on Revelation 13, on Revelation 14, the three angels' messages, the beast, the image, the mark, and what's coming to the world mm -hmm. to, uh, we want to help our own church members, we want to help people in, in the world to understand that the Word of God is being fulfilled right in front of their eyes and they need to understand the issues and they need to get ready for what's Absolutely. coming. Absolutely. The next few days is going to be a huge event happening that has to do with prophecy. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. Yes. Our own pastor, John Loma King, has got media pass to be out in Washington, D.C., and that area. But to, before we do that, we're going to go to some music. Uh, we have one of my his favorite all-time singers is Pastor T. Marshall Kelly. Love this man. Love his ministry. And he's going to sing us a song that reminds us of who we are, where we came from. And the only, the only escape, Steve, for this world's problems today is through who Brother Marshall's singing about, the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is entitled, He Was Found Worthy. When none was found to ransom me, he was found worthy to set a world of sinners free. He was found worthy. Oh, the bleeding lamb, oh, the bleeding lamb, oh, the bleeding lamb. He was found worthy to take the book and loose the seal. He was found worthy. To bruise the head that bruised his heel, he was found worthy. Oh, the bleeding lamb, oh, the bleeding lamb, oh, the bleeding lamb, he was found worthy. His blood can wash us pure like snow. He was found worthy. And all his fullness we shall know. He was found worthy. Oh, the bleeding lamb. Oh, the bleeding lamb. found worthy. Thank you, T. Marshall Kelly, great man of God, so much respect and love for this man and his ministry. Likewise with Pastor Steve Wahlberg. And uh, Brother Steve, right before the song, we were talking about this is a new day. In the next few days, something is happening that is just uh, monumental. Tell us what's going to happen here in America in the next few days. That's right. Uh, Pope Francis is touching down on American soil. He <clears> is <throat> the first Jesuit Pope ever, and he will be speaking. He comes September 22nd. On September 24, which is a Thursday, he speaks to a joint session of Congress. September 25, which is a Friday, uh, he speaks to a large gathering. They're saying the biggest gathering of world leaders ever uh, in New York City for a United Nations gathering. And then on September 26, he is speaking in Philadelphia for the world meeting of families at the uh, lectern, the pulpit, that um, mm -hmm. uh, Abraham Lincoln spoke at uh, during the Gettysburg Address. So the media coverage is just, just going to be massive. Mm -hmm. and, and the context of all of this, in the light of Revelation 13, is very, very potent. 
And, and on top of that, Danny, we have a whole host of articles that I've been researching. We've produced a, a TV series on this. It's coming shortly on 3ABN. Let me just share these quotes with you. Uh, this is an article from Fox News. The title was called, Let's Make Sunday a Day of Rest for God's Sake. Wow. This is uh, Time Magazine. And on the seventh day, we rested talking about blue laws, how they're a gift, Sunday laws, and they have deep roots in American history. Here's uh, USA Today. Headline, tightrope, better take a break or you'll break down. And the article talks about stores being closed on Sunday. Here's another one from uh, ABC News. German court enforces day of rest. German, Germany's highest court strictly enforces day of rest, bans Sunday shopping. Here's another one from Newsmax, also quoted. Uh, it was, the story was run on CNN. The title is Arizona State Senator Make says make Sunday church attendance mandatory. And here's another one from Pope Francis. This is Associated Press. The headline keeping stores open on <clears throat> Sunday is not beneficial for society, says Pope Francis. Mm. And here's one more. Uh, this is from The Guardian. Slow Sunday. The simple solution to global warming. And the subtitle says using Sunday as a day of rest and renewal would be good for our personal health as well as the health of our planet. Mm. So, oh, and here's one more from the Lord's Day Alliance of the United States, uh, April 2015. The title is called Sunday as a Mark of Christian Unity. Mm -hmm. So you've got all these, uh, these statements from major media. And wow. I tell you, this, Danny, this is lining up with Bible prophecy with Revelation 13, with the Pope's visit, and these are the things that we're going to be discussing, and this is, this is what our, our television series that we've recently filmed that's going to be airing on 3ABN called The Sunday Law Crisis is all about. We want to educate when people. When's that start? What's going on? It starts uh, Saturday night, uh, September 26th, the very, right, right the very uh, day that the Pope is in Philadelphia, that night the series begins on our regular time slot, which mm -hmm. uh, central time is 7.30 Saturday night, and it's mm -hmm. a five-part series. A lot of, you've done programs here before, one you did recently, somebody actually text, I, I try to look at emails and things, they said, why do you, you know, it's almost like you're picking on the Catholic Church, or you're picking on this Pope, you don't really know him, how do you judge him? You're not judging the Pope, are you? You don't know no. if he's a good man or bad man, personally. What, what, why is it important that Christians, and maybe especially Protestants today, why is it important that you bring all this information you're about to bring? In other words, we understand. People say, well, don't you know Jesus is the, the most important thing? You ought, ought to be preaching Jesus. Is Jesus in this message you're preaching? Yes, he, he is, Danny. He's very much in the, in the message. He's the, the center of the message. Oh, wow. And the reason why we're talking about this is really, uh, it's not because we have anything against Pope Francis uh, personally. I mean, I like him. He looks like a very nice man. Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't mind, you know, visiting with him. And, and I hope, my hope is that the Lord will really move in his soul and he'll be in heaven. I, you know, mm -hmm. we don't want to write him off for sure. We, we're not the judges, and I, you know, I wouldn't mind uh, having a room He's right next our, to him. Pope's not our judge. <laughs> sure, that's right. And you know, in the New Jerusalem, I'd, I'd ha be happy to be living right next to him. Mm -hmm. So none of this has anything to do with Pope Francis as a person, as a character, or, or Catholic people. It's all based entirely on, on biblical prophecy. And Revelation 13 describes, <clears throat> verse 1, a beast rising up out of the sea. And then it describes characteristics of this beast. <clears throat> Verse 5 says he has, he has a mouth speaking great things. Verse 7 says he makes war on the saints. At the end of verse 7, he says, it, the Bible says, authority would be given to him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. Hmm. Verse 8 says that eventually all who dwell upon the earth will worship this beast, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. He who has an ear, let him hear. So the prophecy describes a beast and it, it pits the beast against the lamb, who is Jesus. And so prophecy reveals a battle between the beast and the lamb. The beast uh, assumes authority that is not his. The beast eventually becomes a key player in world politics. He has authority over all nations. And eventually, the mark of the beast is enforced by law uh, at the end of Revelation 13, at the end of time. But it doesn't and, give a name for the beast, so how do you know 
who or what the beast is. Right, and, and that's where a study of Daniel 7, Revelation 13, a careful study point by point of prophecy and of history uh, comes into play. And okay. so, so Seventh-day Adventists have, uh, we consider ourselves Protestants. <clears throat> we consider mm -hmm. ourselves in the tradition of uh, inheritors of the teachings that were based on the Bible of Martin Luther, who founded the Lutheran Church, John Wesley, who founded the Methodist Church. Uh, you look at Protestants in the past, Wes, uh, Huss, Jerome, etc. Just going down the line, uh, we consider ourselves Protestants who continue, who have continued the Reformation, continuing to bring people back to the Bible. And if you look at the past, you look at prophecy, you look at history. I've got a big book here called The History of the Reformation of the 16th Century by yes. Merle Daubigny. This is mm -hmm. a classic Protestant Huge book. work. That's right. It's a, it's you a, know, Steve, I'm, I'm interested that I, I, I don't want to say most. I haven't done any real studies on it, but many, many Christians that I talk to say I'm Protestant, and I ask them, what's that word mean? And they don't know. They don't know. I said, right. break it down, see if you can figure it out. What Protestant means to protest. What, what are you protesting? You know, this, I don't know. And I'm amazed That's at right. that, because when people will say, I'm Protestant, I heard on the news the other day, he's only made uh, three ABN news two or three times, but I thought it was interesting. They, Donald Trump was on and they said, the Pope is coming. Uh, why do you think about that? You want to meet him? And he said, first of all, I'm Protestant. And I wondered to myself, I, th I thought, I wonder if I ask him what Protestant means if, means, if he even knows where the name came from. Now, he may. I, I don't know, but I thought it's interesting. People will say, I'm Protestant. Because when we talk about a system, many of the Protestants say, well, you shouldn't talk about that. These are great, you know, this, and it's like, well, wait, how can you be against something right. that you're for? Right, that's right. And they, they've lost their knowledge of history. Yeah. When you go back to uh, the 1500s, <clears throat> Martin Luther, he was a, he was a Catholic uh, monk, and then he became a priest, and then he became a teacher in Germany at the University of uh, Wittenberg or Wittenberg. And he eventually got a hold of a, of a Latin Bible, and he began to read the Bible. And as he discovered what the Bible teaches about Jesus Christ and salvation through faith in him, uh, sola, he, he, eventually a movement was developed. And I've, I've got these uh, statements right here. Sola Scriptura, meaning by Scripture alone. Sola Fide, meaning by faith alone. Sola <clears throat> Gratia, meaning by grace alone. And, and Luther <clears throat> discovered, historians say, Luther discovered Jesus Christ. Okay. and salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. And as he began to try to reform the Catholic Church, who, which at that time in Europe was uh, teaching salvation by works, penance, indulgences, uh, prayers to Mary, confession to priests, uh, a whole host of traditions, Luther tried to reform the church and get the church back to the Bible. And the word came from headquarters that you're, you're done. If you don't re recant or repent, your life is over. And then Luther became bold and uh, took a stronger stand. And then historians tell us that he not only discovered Christ, but as he discovered, as he studied prophecy and looked at the beast rising up and how it was centered in Rome and how it had a mouth speaking great things, how it made war on the saints, how it did a whole host of things and had authority over nations, tribes, and peoples. Luther, the, the statement is that he discovered Jesus Christ and he discovered Antichrist. And it's in the light of Christ. So who, who, who did Christ Martin was. Luther feel? Who or what organization did he believe fit the Antichrist prophecy yeah. of Revelation? I'll read it from Daubigny's book. Daubigny's book says uh, that Luther <clears throat> proved by the revelations of Daniel and St. John, by the epistles of St. Paul, St. Peter, and St. Jude, that the reign of Antichrist predicted and described in the Bible was the papacy, the papal power. And then it says, a holy terror seized upon their souls. It was Antichrist whom they beheld on the pontifical throne. This new idea, which derived greater strength from the prophecies, from the prophetic descriptions launched, launched forth by Luther into the midst of his contemporaries, inflicted the most terrible blow on Rome. Mm -hmm. So the fact is, uh, and there's a lot of evidence for this, that the Protestant Reformation discovered Jesus and eventually identified the papal power as the beast of revelation, as the Antichrist, because they saw that salvation is through Jesus alone, and the Roman Church was teaching salvation through a whole lot of other methods instead of going directly to Christ. Uh, here's another, another quick quote from Fox's Book of Martyrs. My book's fallen apart. I, I don't even have all the back cover here, but this is a classic work. And here on page 43, 
It says, disregarding the maxims and the spirit of the gospel, the papal church, arming herself with the power of the sword, vexed the church of God and wasted it for several centuries, a period most appropriately termed in history the Dark Ages. The kings of the earth gave their power to the beast. So Fox's Book of Martyr, cl classic book, uh, Daubigny's book, and the list goes on and on and on of historical Protestant works. It's a fact of history, Danny, that mm -hmm. the Protestants interpreted the beast of Revelation 13 to be the papal power as a system. Okay. Now that we've heard that, this background that helps us some, and I'm sure helps our viewers, read that again, because when you first read it, it's, well, why would you attribute the beast all of a sudden to the Catholic Church or the papacy back in those days. Now we're understanding when we read this, in the name of religion, they killed something like 50 million people. That's right. I mean, think of that. One, that's one out of every six Americans or something to be a, 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 a tremendous amount of people. Some nations don't have 50 million people. They killed over a period of years. So Martin Luther, the Reformation, that's right. they begin to study the Bible. They begin to look at what was described as this beast power and said that could only identify this system. That's right. That's, right? that's, that's exactly right. Okay. When you look at the evidence of the prophecy, the characteristics of the prophecy, you look at the characteristics of the Roman church. This is what moved the reformers <clears throat> in the 1500s and 1600s to eventually protest, to leave the Roman church, to start Protestant churches, Lutheran, uh, Methodist, uh, Baptist, the list just goes on and on. So Protestant and, means protest. Yeah, it means that protest. Right? That's right. And, 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 and Danny, the protest is not over. There's a lot of people today that think that, well, that's just all old history. And, you know, Pope Francis, he, he smiles and he's, he seems like a really good man. And again, we're not questioning his sincerity or his character. But the reality is the Roman church has not changed. It was just a few years ago I was in Europe uh, traveling around. I went to the Vatican. Uh, I saw the statue of supposedly St. Peter in the middle of the Vatican, right in the middle of St. Peter's church. And I saw people kissing the toes. Uh, I, I went to a, one particular church and I saw old women climbing up stairs on their knees, grimacing, trying mm. to earn the favor of God. Wow. Uh, you go to Mexico, you see all these <clears throat> huge statues of Mary and people, you know, bowing down to statues of Mary. I mean, the reality is the Roman church still teaches salvation through a whole lot of different methods rather than through simple faith in Jesus Christ alone. The Roman church is still the Roman church. And prophecy predicts in Revelation 13, verse three, that eventually all the world would marvel and follow the beast. And the reality is that uh, Pope Francis is the most popular person on planet Earth. In a few days, most... would that, uh, in, in the next few days, you think that'll look like the whole world is following? I, I think so. We're going to see, we're going to see massive media coverage. The Pope is now looked at as the moral conscience of the world. Three and... ABN is covering it, by the way. Pastor John is on his way out. He, we've, through our congressman, we've been able to get media passes because Pastor Loma King wants to be right there to hear and see what's going on. We're going to have cameras there. We're going to be able to feed stuff back to 3ABN and uh, because it's important for yeah, all it of is. us. It is. White Horse Media is planning a, a webinar, <clears throat> a live webinar on mm -hmm. September 30. Uh, right after the Pope leaves, and we're going to be discussing the Pope and Bible prophecy, and, and we're just we're keen to look at these things. We feel that prophecy is at hand, mm -hmm. and so so. And then you know we need to shift as we as we talk about the beast issue. Then we need to talk about the Sunday issue, the Mark issue, because as I mentioned, all these different headlines from major news networks, Fox News, CNN, ABC, that uh, Pope Francis he has an encyclical that he he uh, came out with on. June 18, 2015, and it's it's on the environment, it's on uh, calamities, and uh, and a whole host of things. Trying to give recommendations to heal planet Earth. It talks about the poor. It talks about a lot of things. But in the middle of that uh, encyclical on pay on in section 237, and I've actually got the quote right here. Let me find it from this little track that we'll talk about in a little bit. But there's a mm -hmm. quote from section. 237 of his encyclical where Pope Francis says, Sunday, like the Jewish Sabbath, is meant to be a day which heals our relationships with God, with ourselves, with others, and with the world. There's no question that Pope Francis is, is promoting Sunday observance. He did it recently in a radio address. Uh, he has a goal in mind. He wants to see the whole world keeping Sunday. And when you study history, which uh, you've done and I've done, and I have this in my, my books, that the fact is that the that uh, the Bible teaches the seventh day is the Sabbath based on the fourth commandment. The seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. Well, don't you think that's interesting? I hadn't heard that part where he said Sunday like the seventh day 
He like the Jewish, the Jewish Sabbath. Sabbath. That's right. It's healing a relationship. So he's acknowledging. Oh, yes. That's right. But now he says that the very next sentence, which I didn't read in the encyclical, says that Sunday is the day of the resurrection. And the majority of Christians today keep Sunday. They, they don't really know why they do it. They think they do it because of the resurrection. But the reality is, if you go back into history, in the Old Testament, the Sabbath was the seventh day. In the New Testament, the Sabbath is still the seventh day. Jesus Christ was a Sabbath keeper. Uh, Luke 4, 16, Luke 23, 56, uh, Matthew chapter 24, Jesus said, pray that your flight be not in winter or on the Sabbath day. Matthew 12, verse 8, he said, the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath day. And when you look at history, what happened was after, the early, after Jesus died and went to heaven, and uh, the Holy Spirit came down, and the disciples went out and began to preach the gospel. Christian churches were planted all over the Roman Empire. <clears throat> but what happened was, in, in a short time after the explosion of Christianity, the Roman Empire went to war against the Jews. And it became extremely unpopular to be Jewish or to be uh, anything like the Jews. Mm -hmm. And the Sabbath looked Jewish. And so tremendous pressure was put on the early Christian churches, uh, especially in Rome, the heart of the empire, where the, where the church of Rome was established originally as a Bible church, that church began to experience pressure to get away from Sabbath because it looked Jewish. Mm -hmm. a and also to compromise with pagan sun worship because the Romans worshiped the sun on Sunday. And eventually, as the Roman church continued to grow in power, as the Roman Empire disintegrated and the Roman church grew in power to eventually become the power broker during the Dark Ages, the Roman church led the charge mm -hmm. away from the Bible Sabbath toward uh, Sunday. They eventually change the day, and they, they say that they change the day. Uh, here's a quote from the Converts Catechism of Catholic Doctrine, which is one of their books. It's got the Vatican imprimatur on it, and it says here uh, on page 50, question, what day is the Sabbath day? Answer, Saturday is the Sabbath day. Question, why do we observe Sunday instead of Saturday? Answer, we observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the Catholic Church transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. And not only that, oh. but they also say, and here's a quote from this little track that I've written that we'll mention a little, in a little bit. Uh, no, this is a very official letter dated November 11, 1895 from Cardinal Gibbons, who was a very famous mm -hmm. Catholic cardinal in America. Through his chancellor, C.F. Thomas, he said, quote, of course the Catholic Church claims that the change from Sabbath to Sunday was her act, and the act is a mark of her ecclesiastical authority in religious things. The Roman church basically <clears throat> says, we change the Sabbath into Sunday, and this is a mark of our authority, that we are the true church, because no other church could do what we, what we have done. So, so when they say this is a mark of our authority, it's not in the Bible. You didn't just say that. <clears throat> you didn't make it up. That came from the Catholic church. That's right. Right? A very and famous And so cardinal. when Protestants, Baptists, Pentecostals, you name it, Methodists, Protestants worship on Sunday, then they're in spite of themselves, they're actually following the Catholic Church rather than the Bible. That's so right. So Protestantism, if what you just told us, was built on sola scripture. That's right. Right? That's right. So in a way, isn't that, I mean, I wonder if people are thinking, I'd like well, for them to really think about that right now. You're a Protestant. You worship on Sunday as your, the, the holy day instead of the Sabbath. You say, well, we go, what difference does it make? But the Catholic Church here in their own words say, we change that day to show our authority. It's a mark of our ecclesiastical authority. Right. And so there's another statement that I read and put in a little book that I wrote some time ago with Shelley Quinn that, that where they, it's very bold and it says this, that Protestants all major Protestants, it says the only, it's something like the only major, all Protestants except Seventh-day Adventists follow us in spite of themselves when they worship, go to church on Sunday because it's not in the Bible. We established it. So people say, what day does it keep? It's not a matter of day. It's a matter of who am I going to serve? Do I believe the Bible? If I believe the Bible, I need to follow the Bible because if the Catholic Church can do this and the Pope can say that, you know, let's, we're going to change the scripture, or we're just not. We're going to leave scripture. We're going to start tradition, and say Sunday's a holy day. Then I might get to thinking, you know what? It's okay to steal. I think I'm going to start a religion and say it's okay to steal. So everybody that joins my religion, you can steal. If I did that, people would say you can't change the Bible, Steve. You do that. What's wrong with you? You can't do that. But here comes a the power. They can change it 
and people not only uh, listen to it, not only digest it, people who are supposedly protested against them are following them instead of the Bible, what Jesus said to do, That's worship exactly the right. seventh-day Sabbath. And the Pope acknowledges here that Saturday is the Sabbath and was brought, he even said, for healing for the, the Jewish people at the time to, and to draw them closer to their God. So does that mean if we do Sunday, we're actually drawing ourselves closer to the Catholic Church? I'm, I'm asking you. Yes, uh, and, and people don't realize that. When Luther started the Reformation, or was one of the spearheaders of the Reformation, uh, Luther was coming out of great darkness. <clears throat> it's just like when you're in a dark room and a door opens, uh, if you open it all the way, the light's going to be too bright. So you open it up a little bit, and that's the way the Reformation, God began to open the light, the door, and the light began to shine. Luther saw the light, saw Jesus, saw the Bible. Let's get back to the Bible. And he started studying prophecy. And as you go step by step, step by step in the history of the Reformation, different reformers saw new truths, and those truths developed. Uh, and now where we are in this time is God is trying to finish the Reformation. He's trying to get, get his people all the way back to the Bible. And the reality is that the Roman church, based on history and based on Bible prophecy, is uh, symbolized by the beast. I, I believe that's a solid fact. That's what mm -hmm. Luther believed. That's what Wesley believed. That's what uh, Calvin, Spurgeon, Huss, Jerome, the mm. list goes on and on. And, and Sunday is really a Roman Catholic day. And they claim that Sunday is a mark of their authority. And Revelation 13 it tells us that at the very close of time, that the whole world is going to wonder after the beast, and that the mark of the beast's authority is going to be uh, enforced, legislated by law around the world as a misguided solution to a global crisis. And wow. now here we have it, Pope Francis visiting America, talking to Congress, talking to the United Nations, talking at a world meeting of families, getting massive media coverage in the wake of his encyclical dealing with climate change and, and how to uh, help heal the planet. And he's promoting Sunday observance. You've got all these news articles talking about how Sunday is being uh, discussed in the news. And, and Danny, where all of this is heading is that the prophecy of Revelation 13 is going to be fulfilled. And that eventually, as a misguided solution to a global, cr global crisis, Sunday will be enforced as a, an effort to bring humanity back to God. And people don't realize that when that happens, it's really an enforcement of a Roman Catholic day, of the uh, Roman Catholic mark of authority, and that will bring humanity to a final time of test. Mm -hmm. And the test is described in the third angel's message. Revelation 14 tells us right here, the third, verse 9, 14, 9, the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if any man worships the beast and his image, which is a duplication of Catholicism in America, and receives his mark in his mm. forehead or in his hand, the forehead represents the mind, the hand is the actions, it says he himself shall also drink the wine of the wrath of God. And it describes judgments to come upon those who follow the beast and who get the mark. And then verse 12 says, here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And, and just another quick thought here, verse 7 talks about worshiping him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of waters. Verse 9 says, don't worship the beast and get the mark. And then verse 12 says, keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Danny, the only one of the Ten Commandments about the Creator who made heaven and earth, the sea, and everything in it is the seventh-day Sabbath. That wow. quote is right from the Fourth Commandment, and that's the day that's been changed by the Roman Church, and which is being promoted as a mark of its authority, and these are the issues that are going to come up to the whole world in the final crisis. Well, so the, but God is showing in the heart of the Ten Commandments, the Fourth Commandment, is God's mark of authority. That's right. That's exactly so that's interesting. right. That he's the creator of all life. Right. And so, because without that, if we don't know who said those things, I might have written the Ten Commandments. But this one tells us who did. But if I take that away, if I do away with that and change it, then now that mark is transferred from Jesus to another system, a political or a, a religious system like the papacy. That's right. Now here's, here's a little problem I have with what you're saying. If, in order for this to happen, religious freedoms would have to be taken away from those of us here in the United States of America. That's right. In about 2006, 
I was at the White House. The only time I've ever been was invited to go to the White House. I went to the White House, and I met there someone who's, if I mentioned his name, one of the best-known evangelists, radio personalities in America, Christian, known as a Christian, Treme on probably two or 3,000 stations for years. Great impact. And I know who you're talking about. <laughs> I met him personally, and he wanted me to come ask through a friend, we want to come out and see our ministry out west and, and going out towards west. So I was happy to. We sat down to talk, and he said, I like Seventh-day Adventists. I have some friends, but you're totally wrong about your Bible prophecy. And I said, really? And we were in this big, beautiful office. It's great. He said, you're wrong about Bible prophecy because in order for you believe there's going to be a national Sunday law, let me tell you, here's just the way he said it with my hand up, my right hand. Let me tell you something. This will never happen in America. I'm close to Congress. I know what's happening. In order for, for there to be a day that, that forced Sunday law, you would have your religious rights taken away, and that'll never happen in this country. No one is trying to take away any religious rights. And I was thinking about the lady recently that's in jail because she decided that she that's right. felt in her she belief issue a marriage license that she didn't have for same sex that couple. she shouldn't, and she ended up in jail. <laughs> and I know that controversial to a lot of you, but I think that this should open our eyes that don't be so sure religious rights in America will never be taken away from you. And I'm sure this evangelist, this person that I talked to today, is probably having second thoughts himself. He said, I would believe you, but Congress would never do that. That is our rights as Americans. Freedom of religion, you can go any day you want. No one is ever going to tamper with that. That's right. Well, prophecy predicts otherwise. Prophecy predicts it's going to happen. <clears throat> and we can see this with, uh, with what you're talking about, the same-sex marriage issue, with the hate speech issue, uh, even with the way the government uh, is handling suspected terrorists and the fact mm -hmm. that people can be uh, whisked away and taken to secret tribunals and they could be tried without a, without a benefit of a jury, without due process, mm -hmm. without knowing what the accusations are. There can be certain methodologies which have been really discussed in the news, uh, torture methods that are used in the name of national security. But really, this is, these are inquisitional tactics. These, mm -hmm. this is, these are the tactics that were used in Europe and they're, they're being manifest even in America. Now, when, uh. the Pope, when the Pope's encyclical came out, uh, June 18, 2015, President Obama issued a press release from the White House on the very same day. And he said that he uh, totally admires the Pope and recognized his, uh, his moral authority and said that America must lead out in, in the effort to help implement the Pope's encyclical. Wow. And in the encyclical is, is uh, multiple statements about the importance of keeping Sunday. And so, so, again, we see the articles here in the news. We see what's happening with the Catholic Church, with the media, with his visit to America. All these things are coming together. Uh, there's a statement in this book, The Great Controversy, which Seventh-day Adventists have been distributing for a long time. And this book, uh, this is one of our books. There's a statement here. Let me read this to you. It says that as the question, oh, let me back up. It says... Heretofore, those who have presented the truths of the third angel's message have been regarded as mere alarmists, like the person you were referring to. Mm -hmm. Their predictions that religious intolerance would gain control in the United States, that church and state would unite to persecute those who keep the commandments of God have, have been pronounced groundless, to, uh, groundless and absurd. That just goes right along with your statement from your friend. It has been confidently declared that this land could never become other than what it has been, the mm. defender of religious freedom. Wow. But as the question of enforcing Sunday observance is widely agitated, and here's the agitation. Okay. Fox News, CBS, ABC, CNN. Here's the, here's the reports right here. As, as the question of enforcing Sunday observance is widely agitated, and the event so long doubted and disbelieved is seen to be approaching, then the third angel's message will produce an effect which it could not have had before. That's from a chapter called The Final Warning. And Danny, that's where we are. We are we're at the point, it's a new day, uh, and we're seeing prophecy being fulfilled right in front of our eyes. The storm is approaching, the agitation is here, and Danny, it's time 
it's time for the third angel's message. And let me, let me go back to your, your uh, comment about Jesus. Where is Jesus in all of this? Mm -hmm. uh, the third angel's message in Revelation 14, verse 9, talks about those who worship the beast and who get the mark, they will drink the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out into a cup. I've, I've looked at that expression, the cup of indignation, the cup of wrath, and I've gone from there to the Garden of Gethsemane, and I've discovered that in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus Christ drank that same cup of the wine of the wrath of God without a drop of mercy, full justice against sin. He, mm. took, he took all that, the sin of breaking God's law, breaking the Ten Commandments, including the Sabbath. Jesus took all those sins in his mind, in his heart, in his soul, and he suffered for them. He drank that cup on the cross in Gethsemane and on the cross for you and for me. And then he rose from the dead. And his ultimate message is to help people to understand that, that he's the creator. John 1 verse 3, John 1 verse 10, Colossians 1, or, um, yeah, 1 16, Ephesians 3 9, uh, all tell us that Jesus Christ is not just a man, not just the savior, mm -hmm. that he's the creator of heaven and earth. He died on the cross, he came, he became a human, he died on the cross for our sins of breaking God's law, rose from the dead, went to heaven, and he's coming back again. And the big issue is, are we going to follow the beast and his traditions, or are we going <clears> to <throat> follow the creator who gave his life on the cross, rose from the dead, and the Sabbath is the day that reveals the creator of heaven and earth. So that's the issue. Jesus as the creator who gave his life and his Sabbath that points to him as the creator or the beast and his, his mark, his tradition, which ultimately is a violation of the law of God. In, in the final analysis, Danny, the mark of the beast is, is a mark. In, into people's characters where they are, they become commandment breakers and they settle into that. They settle in to commandment breaking in their characters, which is following the beast. And whereas on the opposite side are those who love Jesus, see him as their creator, give him their life and because of love for him, not through work salvation, but through faith in Jesus Christ, the Protestant message of faith in Christ, through faith in him and through the Holy Spirit, they become commandment keepers because they, lo because they love him. John 14, 15, if you love me, Jesus said, keep my commandments. And that's the big issue that the world is gonna face, <clears throat> the Protestant world is gonna face, the Catholic world is gonna face, uh, all, all the people of the earth are going to face. Are you going to follow the creator or the beast? Are you going to keep God's day or man's day? Who do you love? Who do you worship? Who do you serve? What does the Bible say? And that's what our, our TV series, The Sunday Law Crisis, mm -hmm. uh, what you must, what you need to know that's about to air on 3 ABN. That, that series, a five-part TV series, deals with these issues point by point by point uh, and explains them so that people can understand the issues. Wow. You know, Steve, I'm going to say something I've never said in 30 years on television, and I hope that I'm not taken as, a, you know, an offshoot and I'm way out in left field. But we talk about the Antichrist. We talk about prophecy. But I woke up one morning several years ago, early in the morning, and I had a pencil and paper beside uh, the bed, and this thought came to me. The Antichrist is nothing more than the spirit of the devil garbed in the cloak of Christianity. Now you have to think about that for just a second. I may have said this part on the air, but what I'm about to say I've never said before. The Antichrist is nothing more than the spirit of the devil garbed in the cloak of Christianity. What, I, what I'm saying this for, and you all can, you know, if you want to agree with it, you can. If you don't, you don't have to, but you can think about it, you pray about it. What this said to me is, we focus so much, and we should, on the events and the prophecy, the end of time. But so many of us, especially many, maybe many of us Seventh-day Adventist Christians and others, we're looking and focusing on the Antichrist spirit that we know and we've seen in the Bible when if we look at our own church and our own selves, anytime you have people gossiping, you have it, and you know that, you've had it, I've had it all, Things. They still write, there's stuff about me written all the time, sure. and I'm amazed at the garbage, but that people will go to church, you criticize people, you criticize the pastor, you, you gossip about people, you do all these things. That's an antichrist spirit. You can be lost for that as That's well. Right. So we don't want to just limit that, well, we have this, you know, this great, con it is a great controversy between good and evil, 
but let's just don't think, okay, if I keep the Sabbath, for instance, and I don't do that, that I can still go to my church. I can still be doing things that I shouldn't do. I still can love sin, but I try to stay away from it because, well, I want to do what's right. I can gossip about people. I can be lazy, uh, a lazy Christian that I don't want to get out. And, and Jesus says, go ye into all the world. So what I'm doing may be just for some of us, whether you're Baptist, Methodist, Seventh-day Adventist, for some of us, Steve, that my concern is that while this is so important and God gave us this so that we can not be discouraged when all these events are happening, people like you, did you know from the foundation of the world, Steve Wolberg, God knew your name? I believe it's, that and I believe he's called me to do what I'm doing right now. From the foundation of the world, God knew when Jesus was hanging on the cross, you were on his mind. See, he could look down that stream of time. It's very humbling. And see people just like you and you, Steve Wolberg, willing to stand up in the closing moments of earth's history against whatever powers that be to say, I'm going to tell the truth regardless because I'm going to serve God. Now, here you are in ministry. You're willing to tell the truth. It's not always easy. You could have a lot more support and people would like you a lot better if you just shut up. <laughs> well, I feel like Martin Luther, who said, uh, here I stand, so help me God, amen. I, I have to take a stand. I ha I, <clears throat> I'm compelled. I have to do what I'm doing right now. We have to put out this material. We have to do this TV series. We have to get this <clears throat> material out because the time is at hand. It's right here. And I, I agree with you, Danny, that, that uh, ultimately the Antichrist, the ultimate Antichrist is Satan himself. Yes. Uh, 1 John 4, 3 talks about the spirit of Antichrist, which is even now in the world. And, yes. and Satan is at war with Jesus and with his law. And, and so if any of us are breaking God's commandments willingly, then we are ultimately in harmony with the spirit of Antichrist. And it's a bigger issue than just one organization. We have to all look at our hearts and pray that we will end up on the side of, pray that Jesus will cleanse us from sin, wash us clean, put his love in our hearts, and help us to be true commandment keepers in sure. these last days and to give his message. We have to do it. Uh, but, but let me share with you quickly what, what our Sunday, crisis series. In, in the first program, we deal with Revelation 13, like we're talking mm -hmm. about. We go into more detail. Uh, the second program, we talk about how to get ready for the Sunday law crisis spiritually. Mm -hmm. The third one is how to get ready practically. The fourth one is how to prepare for persecution. And the fifth one is when to get ready to head for the hills. When the final crisis hits, Revelation talks about a death decree in Revelation 13, and, uh, and nobody can buy or sell. And there's a time when we actually had to have to head to the mountains and mm. trust the Lord to take care of us like he took care of the uh, Israelites when they came out of Egypt. Uh, I have guests on, my, on this program, Tim Saxton, uh, Dean Corridan, who's the conference president, I Iowa, Missouri Conference, uh, Pastor Ignatius Chaviano, who is a retired pastor who was persecuted in a concentration camp in, uh, in Cuba. Wow. We, I, and I interview him, Nick Meisner, who's, uh, the, who's part of a ministry called Sustainable preparedness. Uh, these programs are powerful, Danny, and they go into these issues and they explain them right from the Bible and they're designed to be uh, shared with the world uh, by the, with the grace of God and uh, funding provided. Uh, we're hoping to make this series into onto one DVD, five half hour program, five half hour programs on one DVD. And we want to have we want to have hundreds and thousands of these DVDs. Mm -hmm. That's where we need some funds. But uh, once we get these DVDs, <clears throat> we can distribute them and people can give them out and share them. Uh, we just have so much information. We have resources here. We have a, a newsletter called The Time Is At Hand. It's a beautiful four color newsletter that goes through all the prophecies right here uh, in color. And this is for sharing. Uh, we also have a little, this little track and maybe we can put that picture on the screen of the track. I know they're, they're waiting for mm -hmm. that, but there's the track. It's in English and Spanish. It's called The Pope and Prophecy, mm -hmm. uh, and it will be published by Remnant Publications. It is now, as, as I speak, I believe today, it is on the press, okay. and it's being yeah. printed. Uh, Whitehorse Media will have these as well. Remnant is the publisher, and this track deals, it, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not a track where we're, we're blasting people. It's, it's carefully written. It's, uh, 
and it deals with the issues. It deals with Revelation 13, mm -hmm. point by point by point, explains mm -hmm. about the Sabbath Sunday issue, the Mark of the Beast issue, the Creator issue, Jesus is our Creator, and ultimately the, what we have to do and the choices we have to make. And it ends, it ends with this. It says, the choice is yours. Will you follow the Bible or the Beast? Mm -hmm. And this track is available uh, by the time people watch this. It is available and we hope that this track will be distributed by the millions to help people to understand the issues because that's what they need to know. They need to know the third angel's message from the Bible. And that's our calling, Danny. There's no other church in the world that's doing this. No other church is talking about the beast, the image, the mark, the cup, the wrath, uh, the mercy, and keeping the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Jesus is right there in this message. It's his message. He's at the middle of it. He's at the end of it. He gave it to us. And may God help us to follow him and to uh, share his message with his power, no matter what it costs. And it's more than coincidence, it's divine providence, that God has <clears throat> raised up a church and a people that would give this because this message is for an end times message for an end times people. That's Am exactly I right? right. That's exactly right. And so that's why God has called many of us to be here in the closing moments of earth's history. It's a warning message to the world. For those of you that say, wow, I don't understand that, keep watching 3ABN. We're going to put up Steve's address. You can write him with questions, 3ABN, whatever you want to do. But what God is doing, because he loves us, a lot of churches, I talk to people that say, well, we don't get into Daniel Revelation <clears throat> that stuff's all past, and that's not important. And it's like, you know, all Scripture is given, right? That's right. For studying, for proof and reproof. That's right. It, now, to uh, me, it's... We, we want to get the opener up there, too, that 30-second we opener. We'll get it. What's important is that God has sent you a road map to tell each of us how we can make it to heaven and not be discouraged by all the discouraging things and all the scary things and all the things we're not sure of and all the doubt by following his roadmap. That's the word of God. So what he's doing in prophecy is saying, Amen. there's going to come a day, <clears throat> but don't worry about it. Because if you look to me, you stick to the Bible and the Bible only, you will make it through, not only here, but most importantly, it's not how long our life lasts here, but for eternity, you can rule and reign and be in heaven here with me. We do have an opening. You want yes. to show that? Yes, it's okay. 30 seconds, and it's, what, uh, it's about the Sunday Law Crisis TV series. So why don't we just roll that in so people mm -hmm. can see what's coming on 3ABN. That's the opener, and that's our series, and we hope that people around the world will watch it on 3ABN, and then we'll have it as a DVD that people can share in mass to help others understand what the real issues are. Couldn't be better timing for this series than now, just when it's right. starting. I mean, that's literally. Right. <laughs> that's right, and Revelation says in chapter 22, verse 10, it says, do not seal the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. We're there, Danny, and I'm, I'm excited that the Lord is coming, and, uh, but we got to get through this crisis before he comes. We have to stand for him in the crisis, and we need to understand that. Absolutely, and it's my hope and prayer and ours that each of us, no matter what church we go to or don't go to, that we realize there's, we're all born uh, term, term, with the terminal disease, and that's death. The only way out is to submit and commit our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ, and the only, when we do that, he says, go and tell what I have done for you. Our greatest assets are our own personal testimony of what God has done for us. People can't refute that. People, when you tell them that, Jesus says, I, if I be lifted up from this earth, will draw all men unto me. So it's, we're encouraging each and every one of you, get these DVDs. 3ABN has a number of programs that we're doing now. Say, we want to share these with our friends and our neighbors. We're going to put up uh, Steve's address right now, and then we're going to be going to a news break. If you would like to get in contact with Steve Wahlberg or to get additional information on the ministry of White Horse Media, then write to him at White Horse Media, P. 
P.O. Box 1139, Newport, Washington, 99156. That's White Horse Media, P.O. Box 1139, Newport, Washington, 99156. Or call him at 1-800-78-BIBLE. That's 1-800-782-4253. Or go to the website, whitehorsemedia.com. That's whitehorsemedia, one word, dot com. I'm Shelley Quinn, and God is at work. We're excited about the tremendous response we've received to 3ABN's The Blessing is on the Go evangelistic team. This movement to engage each of our viewers and listeners in evangelism is revitalizing our efforts to share present truth around the world and in your neighborhoods. Most of you recognize the signs all around us point to the soon return of Jesus Christ, and recent events have increased the urgency for evangelism. Our obligation is to warn others and fulfill the great gospel commission. And now we have a way to accomplish that, a way so simple that anyone from age 9 to 90 can participate. Every week, hundreds of you are joining our Go Evangelistic team, registering as monthly donors and signing up to receive our monthly evangelistic tools. 3ABN's president, Danny Shelton, has pledged to sign each certificate, and you're keeping him very busy. It's exciting that you are encouraging others to follow and be laborers in God's harvest fields at home while supporting evangelism abroad. And many of you are going online to share your excitement on social media. We'd love to hear your stories. Share your testimony of what God is doing for you as a Go Evangelistic team member by simply recording a one to two minute video on your smartphone and submitting it to us by email. Our address is get at 3abn.tv. That's get at 3abn.tv. If you are not yet a member of 3ABN's Go Evangelistic team, we encourage you to pray about joining today. It's easy. You simply register to make a monthly tax deductible donation of any amount to support evangelism around the world and within your neighborhoods. And each month, 3ABN will send you a book, CD, DVD, or study guide to share with your family, friends, and neighbors. Please pray earnestly. And if the Holy Spirit impresses you to join the Go Evangelistic team, you may register on our website, 3abn.tv. Just click on the Blessing is on the Go banner to make a monthly tax deductible gift by credit card or PayPal. It's easy to register online, but if you wish, you may request to join the team by calling 618-627-4651 or by sending a letter along with your tax deductible donation to 3ABN, Post Office Box 220, West Frankfort, Illinois 62896. Thank you for your love, your prayers, and your financial support, and may God richly bless you. I hate to say it, but our time is all gone for today. But until we see you next time, may the Lord richly bless you abundantly more than you could ever ask or think.